Lucia Agnello is the co-creator, co-showrunner, writer, director, executive producer of the second season of Hacks on HBO Max. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Lucia, such a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I, I, want, I wanted to start with where the season ends, season one ends, which is such an exciting direction for the series. Uh, Deborah bombs her final show at the Palmetto, but is excited to test out new material on the road. So I just wanted to know, you know, what was the kind of impulse and the discussions when you were kind of breaking season two about why you wanted to take the series on the road and leave Las Vegas? Yeah, I mean, when we, so we originally came up with, I'm gonna start from the beginning. We originally came up with this show about like seven years ago. And as a result, um, we have been constantly been like, oh, this is an idea or that's an idea or whatever. But because we had such a long incubation period, it meant that once we actually pitched the show, we were able to pitch the whole series. We knew kind of, here's what's gonna happen in the beginning and then this is what happens and this is what happens and up until the series finale, which, which we do know how we want it to end. So as a result, um, it kind of meant that we were, able to we were able to approach each season already kind of knowing what that season is about. Um, so when we were writing season one, we already knew very early that season two, if we were so lucky to get a second season, would have this road trip element to it. So. So it was always, I guess, very much by design. And, and part of what that, the, why that was by design was, you know, season one, you really meet Deborah still in this insulated place of, of Las Vegas where she has her creature comfort. She has her mansion out in the desert. She's able to kind of be comfortable and isn't really forced to challenge anything and, or update her act or, or anything like that. So almost Ava comes into her world and starts to shake it up a bit and convinces her essentially to do this new hour the, she knows the only way to, to really figure it out is on the road. There's no way she can stay in Vegas and figure out a new hour. It's just not never going to happen. And so by putting her on the road and making her a fish out of water, it really forces her to confront so much. It forces her to leave, leave that, um, you know, safety net that she has um, in Vegas. And it, it really forces her to confront a lot of things and to be uncomfortable literally and figuratively. So, so the season is putting her in a really, you know, tough situation, but she knows that that's the only way to get to the, end, to the only way to get to the other side is through. Um, and so we really feel like that was a lot, of, gives us a lot of fodder for, for what to, to, to like delve into over the whole season. And, and it's tough. It's a tough time for Deborah. It's not, it's not easy sleeping on the road. That's rough. <laughs> even for her, yeah. even in her gorgeous bus. Yeah, there, there's um, so much in your answer that I want to dive into, but I have to ask a follow up about um, about your series plan. I mean, is there anything you can tease us now that you've mentioned that um, about how many seasons you want to go or, you know, anything else you can tease us? I mean, uh, do you want me to say, you know, you don't want me to spoil anything. I mean, no. I'll say this. I think I'll, I'll say this much. I think that um, you, you've seen how many six or so? I've seen six. Right. Yeah, the eight. Six. Yep. I mean, you at least, you know, and I, I don't know how much I, I don't want to spoil too much, but at least you know by the end of where you've seen two, she has gotten the show to a really good place. And, and so, you know, not to say that I, I don't want to give too much away, but like the idea is that, you know, when she has this new hour, it's really vulnerable and it's really honest and it's raw. And, and because she's doing so much of this, you know, new, this new work, it then in theory will hopefully set her on a whole new path of what does that mean to have all of that out there and to gain relevancy in a new way is she now is that now the Deborah that she is or is she still the older Deborah or now that she is newer Deborah does the old Deborah come to haunt her you know and, and dealing with that is is I think the next stage and the next chapter of what we want to say um and and I think again it's it's not easy to to push yourself to evolve is incredible and really hard to do. But then once you get to the other side, what is that who you now are? And, and I think that that's, it's really, I think really interesting because I think we're all trying to be better people, but to what end, you know, I hope we're yeah. trying to be, well, I'm trying to be better. I go to therapy. I don't know. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I love that about this season is Deborah really tapping into her vulnerability and also being an underdog for, you know, perhaps the first time in a long time, certainly since we've since we've met the character. So what do you find like inherently funny um, and just so rewarding about seeing Deborah trying to claw her way back to the top if she can get there? 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, she's always had the upper hand kind of with everybody in, in her life. And she's been in a position of power for a long time. And, you know, I mean, a certain kind of power, <laughs> but um, to see her really struggle and to see her have to start from the beginning, it's really humbling. And I think that like, when you, when you're willing to be brave enough to, to do that at the, at, at her age, I think it says a lot about her and her willingness to always put the art first. Cause I think that's why she's, that's why she's doing this is because she knows this new hour is exciting and it is good. She just needs to get it there. And it speaks to her. Yeah. As an artist, I think more than anything. And to show that struggle, I think like anyone who's starting from the beginning, it's like, it's daunting, but there's no other way to start, you know? And so um, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, I think also great. It's cool to see Jean inhabit a character who's really struggling and to see her, you know, at her ability, like she can do absolutely anything. So for us to be able to write towards, you know, somebody who's kind of a little bit less confident with every day that she was season one is it's just fun. It's fun to, to see that to see that struggle. I mean, you know, yeah. fun, fun, but interesting fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And Jean is just as incredible as, as you'd expect her to be uh, with the new material. Yeah, she, plus she sings. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm definitely asking her about that later when I talk to her, because um, that was a very exciting new facet of the character. Um, I want to turn to your, your role as director too, because you direct a majority of the episodes um, as you did in season one. Um, and what I love about your work behind the camera this season is you know, we have such a wider uh, geography to, to work with. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, what was appealing to you as, as not just writer, but also, you know, as a director and your work behind the camera in leaving Vegas again, but exploring so many different geographies across the country? Yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, we set the visual language of Vegas to be, like I was saying before, like she is in this palace, uh, you know, in the desert. And she's found that to be quite comfortable and it's a bit of a, a protection layer for her. And so to get her out of that and into just a bus um, across the country at gas station, rest stops and at dive bars and on ships and on buses, and, you know, it is, it is a whole new visual language. And I think, you know, we wanted to, we as in the cinematographer and uh, Adam Bricker and I, and, and Paul and Jen as well, and honestly, our, our, our op camera operators as well, um, especially Charlie Panian, who's your, who is one of our operators who, who went across the country with the bus and got a lot of that really incredible um, cinematography that, that is used throughout the season. Um, but uh, what we really wanted to say, I think, is, is, is her story of getting back out there and hitting the road again is set uh, against this backdrop of America that is you know, just like her beautiful, but complicated. And, you know, like to, to capture that of, of like, there's this beauty of, of this struggle that I think um, she's going through the season. And, and, you know, we actually use as references uh, a lot of art uh, uh, and wanting to capture the, the visual language in a way that is both, yeah, beautiful, but sometimes not perfect. And we, Matthew Cornell is a, is a painter that captures that very beautifully that we re referenced a lot um, and, and a lot of um, other other artists as well. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's also tough to shoot in a bus, <laughs> you know, and to make that interesting, exciting and, and so tight quarters, but that also is interesting, I think, especially for the characters to be kind of in this really tight, you know, when you travel with somebody that's tells you a lot about yourself and of them and your relationship. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of different things at play, but but uh, I think it's it's again, you know, I really always strive to make visual language something that feels unique to the show and unique to the story. And I try to take myself, I don't ever want anybody to see something I've done and think, oh, that looks like something Lucia has directed. Because to me, as long as you don't notice the things that I tend to do, um, then then actually it's, it's when I'm serving the story and the characters the most. And so the more invisible I am, I think the better job that I feel like I'm doing. Yeah, I, and I wanted to ask you, you mentioned Adam Bricker, your cinematographer. I wanted to ask you about that collaboration because, you know, there are a, a lot of very striking and absolutely beautiful shots this season. 
um, you know, as you're moving through the mountains and the Grand Canyon and all these different locations. I mean, it is visually, you know, very arresting. So just wanted to ask you about your collaboration with, with him and figuring out, you know, when you knew this was the kind of plot of the season, you know, figuring out lo the locations you wanted to go and, and making, that, making that visual language work so well. Well, yeah, a lot of that started also in the writer's room and in the writing where we wanted to change it up and make it feel like you really were at all these different places. Um, so we wrote to that a lot, um, whether we're like, okay, let's set this one in Memphis, let's set this one in Indiana or, or whatever, um, and, and wanting to make it feel different, whether we're at a state fair or um, on a ship, you know. Uh, but in terms of my relationship and working with Adam, I mean, we really, I think, part of, I think, why we work really well together and I, it's been such a um, great relationship is that, you know, we really, I don't think are, I think, when neither of us have an ego about about the work and, and about our collaboration. Um, and we really just are on, you know, we, we try to really strive for, strive for a lot and, you know, not a lot of time. We, we do get seven days a, an episode, which, is a lot, but also isn't a lot. Uh, when you think about how many setups we're trying to do in a day and how much, you know, it's a full 30 minutes, sometimes more. Um, and we'll, we'll get, you know, we'll get 50 setups in a day and that's not shocking for us to, to get that many. It's not the most we've gotten, you know, something like the, the UFC fight night in, in 201, there will be blood. Like we shot all the UFC stuff, the fight, the scenes, all the stuff in two days. And that, that was really a lot to do in two days. Um, and, you know, I think we, we talk a lot about, you know, how this scene should feel before we even get into shots or anything like that, um, or you know, breaking down coverage or or, or whatever. Um, but you know, because we talk about like how should it make you feel, then then that kind of gives us a like, all right, so now let's hone in on how do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? Like for example, in there will be blood in that fight scene. Like we have all the there's there's two parts of it, right? There's the the beginning fight, and then there's Deborah's speech to Aiden, and then there's the rest of the fight. And you know, we we through talking about it, we decided, okay, all of the fighting before the speech, the camera should always be outside of the cage, and we should always see it from that point of view. And then after the after the speech, now all of a sudden we're inside the cage and we're feeling it more, and we're we're seeing it like through Deborah's point of view, really, because not only is she standing closer to it. But that speech to Aiden is a speech to herself. So when she sees, you know, like get back out there, you're gonna hit him and you're gonna hit him again. And and you know, that she's talking to herself. So now we're actually inside the cage because we are with Deborah, we are with Aiden, we are, you know, the protagonist now. Um, so so choices like that is it just comes from just a lot of discussion, as as much time as we have for talking, we do talk. Um, but also, you know, we we are open to ideas from other people. Like I said, you know, Paul and Jen are, are also have a huge say in, in the visual language as well as our camera operators will all be like, hey, I, I have this shot. And because we have, this is interesting to people, I don't know. We have three cameras operating at all time. Um, and I had actually never worked with three cameras except for like for bigger, you know, action set pieces. And that really opens us up because sometimes if in a scene or on a side or a setup, I'll have ideas for two cameras and here's what I want, definitely want to get, but now I have a third camera. I maybe won't put in the shot list, here's what I want in that setup. I'll kind of let the Adam or the operators or I'll have an idea or somebody else will have an idea for, hey, why don't we get this shot while we're here? And, and that opens you up to shots and setups that ordinarily you don't get. And I get to have that. And that's such a luxury. And I think that that really opens up some shots that, yeah, are, are so incredible and you might only see it once but it tells you that there's just you know more breadth and scope to it than and that i think is is immeasurably helpful yeah absolutely thanks so much for um for that explanation because it, it opens up a lot um at least in my eyes yeah, um I I, way too long i'm so sorry no no, no <laughs> i have to let you go but um i have to also just congratulate you on your emmy wins last year um belated congratulations congratulations on the second season of hacks and thanks so much for talking to gold derby today thank you thanks